Shalom. It's wonderful to be here with you and welcome to our Seder <laughs> celebration for this year. Oh, I so wish that we could be together as we have in years past, but yet one more time, we're at least here to celebrate with you in the form of a video. I'm delighted to be here with a new member of our community chaplaincy staff, Cantor Deb Winston, who's bringing along her talents, including a beautiful voice and music, which will add to our Seder celebration this year. As we begin, uh, we'll spend the next little while together um, looking at the highlights of the Seder and enjoying uh, some memories of Seder's past and creating hopefully some new ones together. And as you'll hear from Cantor Deb, you know, sing along, open your heart. We'll, we know you're there with us. We feel your presence even, even on the other side of the screen. Um, so as a way to, to begin, just to invite you to think for a moment, to imagine what you can remember from Seder's past. What, what was on your table? What did your Seder plate look like? Perhaps the kind of wine that you chose to drink. What were the smells that were in your house as you got ready for Passover? Were they special for this holiday, unique? And of course, what were the messages and the story that you told each to to you and to all your guests, the sounds of the Seder, the sounds of the music. We hope together over the next short while to bring back and create some of those memories. Most importantly, it's on this holiday that we celebrate the journey into freedom, leaving slavery behind as our ancient ancestors did in Egypt and, and thanking God that we are free as well as all human beings are free. Well, the first ritual that we have is the first cup of wine. And uh, as we're getting ready for that, and I have my my cup here, as we're getting ready to say this blessing, um, you know, there's an interesting thing about the Seder. There are lots of fours in the Seder. I don't know, uh, Cantor Deb, do you, do you have a favorite four in the Seder? I like to hear about the four children. Oh, the four children, indeed. We're going to we're going to talk about those. Well, there's four cups of wine. Um, there are four questions. We're going to hear those as well. And um, some might not even know that in traditional Seder, we actually tell the story four times. But don't worry, we're going to make sure we get the highlights of the story for us today. So we begin with the first cup of wine. Please join me. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Borei peri hagafen. Blessed are you, Adonai our God, sovereign of the universe, who has created the fruit of the vine. And we add, Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, shehechianu, vikiamanu, vihigianu, lazman hazeh. A prayer of gratitude, blessed are you, Adonai our God, who is the ruler of time and space. We thank you for granting us life, for sustaining us, and for bringing us to this moment of celebration. Amen. So of course, there are many rituals and aspects to the Seder. I'm gonna reach over for my Seder plate, which is right there, and you can see some of the elements on it. I believe Cantor Dead might have one as well, a little bit different looking. And you can see some of the various elements on it, with the shank bone and the roasted egg and some other things that will come back later. I'm going to take, pick up a piece of carpas right now as we move to that part of our service. And the carpas represents spring. You know, the weather here in Minnesota, you never know what's going to happen next. It has felt like a beautiful spring day here in sort of early to mid-March, but gosh, we could still get uh, snow by the time actually Passover shows up. So we're in Minnesota. But nevertheless, our hope is that as 
seeds begin to uh, germinate, seeds begin to grow. Those are the seeds of hope in the new year, in the new season. But we take a moment and I have my bowl of salt water and I dip it in my salt water carefully. Place that over here. And then we'll say together the blessing for Karpas. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Borei peri Blessed are you, sovereign our God, ruler of the universe, the one who's created the fruit of the earth. Wow, salty. Salty, those tears, the salt water reminding us of the challenge of being enslaved, the uh, hardness and the bitterness that comes along with that experience that our ancestors felt. And maybe at times we too felt a little, feel a little enslaved, a little challenged by life circumstances. Here we come though to an interesting next part of the Seder many people are aware of. I'm gonna pick up my matzah in my cover. Right there, it says matzah on there. And inside are three uh, matzot. I'm simply gonna reach in for the middle one. Sometimes people equate the three matzot with our three patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Ah, a sheet of matzah. At this point in the Seder, this is called yachatz. We break the middle matzah carefully. Oh, the crumbs are flying everywhere. And then I'm going to take a special container that I also have nearby. It says on my container, Afi Komen. I'm going to place my matzah inside of this container. Everybody should be paying attention, even though we're not close to each other, because of course the tradition is that this is going to be hidden. And we can't finish our Seder unless we find the Afi Komen. So I'm going to hide it away. Don't anybody look as I'm trying to secretly stash it so that we can find it. If we don't find it, we can't conclude our Seder. And we'll just have to be here forever and ever together. But uh, we'll see what happens with our Afi Komen. Um, uh, one of the things I always like to think about, especially now, is that the Afi Komen specifically is broken. And this is a tradition that we maybe can add a new meaning to. There is a saying that uh, Elie Wiesel borrowed from the Kutzka Rebbe that there is nothing more whole than a broken heart. And that each of us is like an individual with a slightly broken heart. There's some brokenness in our lives, perhaps from this past year, from life in general, the challenges of living and being. And yet, if we don't honor the broken parts, we don't honor the wholeness of who we are, life has challenge. And even in that challenge, we say that we carry both these broken parts and our whole parts. And together, that's what it means to be a human being. So as we move through our Seder, the matzah was probably one of the greatest symbols of Passover. And lots of times we think about the matzah as being really a symbol of affliction. It's what the Israelites quickly had to run out of Egypt uh, because their dough didn't rise. But it also was the food by which they were able to live. It was really the, the sustenance upon which they even had to endure daily as slaves. And so we think about this with regard to a certain moment now in the Haggadah entitled Halachma Anya, that it is our obligation, even when our food is meager or not so interesting, to eat, that we still have the obligation to care for others, to feed others, and to be concerned for our neighbor and their well-being. In English, the prayer goes, this is the bread of affliction that our ancestors had eaten in Egypt. Let all who are hungry come and eat. Let all who are in need come and celebrate. Now we are here next year in the land of Israel. Now we are like slaves, but next year may we be free. This is the bread of affliction. Halachma, halachma anya di achalu, achalu ahavatana biarya biarya di mitraim be. Be'ariah, be'ariah, 
We continue now in our Seder experience to uh, perhaps one of those very well-known parts, the four questions. And uh, the four questions are um, very old. They come from the time of the Mishnah. And they, we've been saying them often, the tradition is by the youngest person that is around your Seder table, although I think that we're all young at heart, no matter <laughs> our age. Um, this year, though, I, I just pause and ask us to think about, while there are traditional four questions for the Seder, that this is a time to ask questions in general. And we encourage question asking, of course, in the Jewish tradition, but especially at the Seder. And to think about for yourself, what would be your new question this year? Maybe you have two questions that you would want to ask and to ponder. Sometimes the important part is simply asking the question, even if we don't get the answer that we're hoping for or looking for. But to ask questions is really to show interest and to be engaged. In the questions themselves, in just a moment, we're going to hear them and sing them and, and learn about them. Um, one of the opening thoughts, though, is to consider the words manish tana halayla hazeh, right? What is different about this night, this moment? And this has certainly been a year. What is different now for each of us this year than this time last year? What is unique? What do I feel? What am I thinking? What is significant for me this year? The four questions. I'm going to sing the very first line in the oldest ancient melody that is thought to sound much like it might have sounded 3,000 years ago, um, and then switch to the Israeli melody, a much more modern take on the questions. Ma nishtana halayla hazemi kol halaylot. Shebechol halaylot anu ochlin chametu matza. Chametu matza. Halayla hazemi halayla hazemi. Kulo matza halayla haza halayla haza kulo matza. Why is it night from all other nights? <clears throat> on all other nights, we eat chametz and matzah, but on this night, only matzah. Shebechol halelot anu ochlin shehar yerakot shehar yerakot halayla haza halayla haza maror maror halayla haza halayla haza Maror, maror. On all other nights, we eat many vegetables, but on this night, only maror. Shebechol halelot, ein anu matbilin, afilu pamechat, afilu pamechat, halayla haza, Halayla haza shetefe amim. Halayla haza, halayla haza shetefe amim. On all other nights, we don't dip even once, but on this night, we dip twice. Shebechol halelot. Anu ochlin, ben yoshvinu, ben misubin, ben yoshvinu, ben misubin. Halay lahaza, halay lahaza, kulanu misubin. Halay lahaza, halay lahaza, kulanu misubin. 
On all other oh. nights, we eat either sitting up or reclining. On this night, we all recline. Very good four questions. You know, there's some simple answers to each of the questions for that first one. Why matzah tonight? Well, again, as the Pharaoh was being harsh upon us and then finally let the Israelites go, the Israelites had to leave in a hurry. And as the tradition teaches us, they took the dough that was already made but yet had not risen into fluffy loaves and brought it along. And in the haste of leaving, only had time for it to rise enough to make a very flat, dry cracker. Bitter herbs. Well, in the ancient world, and even today, slavery is embittering. It's a hard circumstance to live under. And we think about the cruelty of bitterness, the cruelty and bitterness of being enslaved. And that reminds us of our ancestors and perhaps a reminder today of our challenge to continue to seek freedom for all people everywhere. Dipping once, but twice. Very interesting custom. In the old days, well before we had all the spices and things that we have, food was rather bland. So actually, one of the historical things we know is that they had to dip their foods to make it tasty. And yet, we've already dipped once. We put that parsley into salt water, reminding us of the tears. And we're going to dip a little bit later our bitter herbs into a sweetness, kind of a mixture of sweet and, and bitter together. Again, a reminder of the challenge of what it means to be enslaved. And finally, if you're a slave, you don't have time to relax. You're always on the go. You don't have moment to rest. And so even eating is done in haste. But here at the Seder, we take our time. We enjoy our foods, our ritual foods, and actually our meal. And we relax and we recline in freedom. The next part of the Seder is another four. Uh, the famous four children. And um, today we're going to look at some artwork of the four children. But before we see those pictures, a reminder. The four children include the Hacham, the wise child, the Rasha, the, the wicked or the rebellious child, the Tom, often called the simple child. And the fourth child is She'eno Yodea Lishol the one who does not know how to ask. As we look at the pictures, I'll invite you to think about which child might you be like? As I mentioned earlier, I think we all have a little bit of children in us. And this is the holiday of asking questions. And the curiosity is, what kind of questions are we asking? And where are the questions coming from? So as we look at the first image here, it's an old Haggadah. The, uh, the uh, artist is Arthur Schick, and this is from 1939. So if some of us are thinking about the history in the time when a Haggadah is made, each Haggadah tells a certain story by virtue of the time in which it was crafted. So this might be showing some images relative to that point in the history of the world. So we go to the next one. The same question here we have on the top right, we have the Hacham. And next to the hacham on the top left is the tom, is the simple. The rasha is wicked on the bottom on the right. And finally, the she'eno yodea lishol on the left on the bottom. This is a Haggadah from 1955 drawn in Israel. And it has a certain flavor of the story of the state of Israel. You can probably pick out some of those images as you, as you notice it. An artistic rendition, the four children. This one is based around music, actually, if you can find the musical instruments here. I uh, certainly can see a, a shofar or perhaps a flute, some sort of instrument there on the left. And of course, this is wonderful. This one's crafted by a child, a young uh, girl. Uh, and uh, it's the picture of a children by a child. So you can see some elements here that might be uh, familiar or easy to pick out. The Barbie doll on the left. And the question is, is she, uh, if you can see the writing, and boy, we could spend a long time on this art, you'll notice that there are slightly very slight different variations of what each of these is even called. So instead of the, uh, the, um, uh, the, the Tom, it's right, it's a good girl over there on the bottom on the left. 
and you can see the stuffed animals of the one who doesn't know how to ask, truly a baby, perhaps doesn't yet have the capacity to ask a question. A couple different images here. Another Israeli artist, notably all four of the four children here. Not so young, but they're certainly women, young women. Our modern era, many of us are familiar with emojis. Who knew the four children as emoji characters? <laughs> So a variety of images, a variety of Haggadot. Some of these crafted here in the United States, some of them of characters you might know. The Marx Brothers, for example, on the bottom right. Is it Israeli Haggadah, modern version? I always like to pause on this particular image. This one's from the Rabbinical Assembly Haggadah. And what I truly like about this is the idea it teaches that in each of us, perhaps we can understand the finding of all four types of children. And this artist represents this by putting each color and every shape within all four images. Another artistic rendition. And in this final version, what you notice are four hands reaching up to the Torah. So no matter what child we are, whatever is in our heart, we all share the common connection, the common goal of connecting to God at this time through the story of Passover. So we move through our Seder celebration. We move now to the centerpiece of the Haggadah, the Magi, the telling of the story. You heard me say earlier that there are four, at least four renditions of the telling. We're gonna share, uh, Cantor Deb and I, one version of that story with you. And um, begin first by thinking about where the ancient Israelites were found. Of course, they were enslaved in Egypt, having ended up there some 400 years after the story of Joseph. Egypt in Hebrew, the word is Mitzrayim. Mitzrayim comes from the Hebrew root of Tsa'ar, which means narrow. So when we think about slavery, when we think about being somewhere that we don't want to be, we think of being constricted. We're in a, a thin space, a narrow space. We don't have the all out freedom that we would like to perhaps have. And it's coming from this tight space is what it means to leave into freedom. I just pause again to give you a moment to think, what narrow space are you anxious perhaps to leave? What space are you ready to be free from in this year, this Passover celebration? Now our story. So in the biblical rendition, of course, we know that uh, the Israelites were enslaved and they were in Egypt and having to do very, very hard labor and over them was a taskmaster. His name was Moses, although he wasn't known as Moses yet. He was a taskmaster that had lived under the Pharaoh's household, and he was out one day making sure that all the right things were being done according to the plans of the Pharaoh and the Pharaoh's entire kingdom. He noticed at one moment that there was a, a, a slave being beaten, and Moses, all of a sudden said, stop, stop, this isn't what we're going to do. And he actually killed that slave driver. In that instant, it occurred to him that he was no longer safe living in Egypt, even as a prince of the palace, and so he fled. Something in his heart had caught his attention. Something had said to him, this isn't right. And sure enough, out in the desert, he has this experience of burning bush. And it was at that place and in that moment in time where the message of God came into Moses' heart with great clarity. Of course, at the same time, 
he also realized a message from God was, and now you will return to Egypt and bring out all of your brethren, all of your sisters and your brothers into freedom. You won't go alone, said God. First, I'll send with you your brother Aaron, but I will also be there with you. This will be a hard journey before you, but one which you will go forth. And so when Moses arrived, it was his job to convince the Pharaoh to let the people go. As we know that story, what they encountered though was a hardening of Pharaoh's heart. And in the midst of that hardening heart, each time God would assure Moses that, he would, that God would bring an opportunity of reminding Pharaoh to let them go. And we call these the 10 plagues. The tradition with the plague is to bring your cup of wine and with the cup of wine that we diminish our joy. Even in the midst of our joyfulness to be free and to be able to uh, say that we are no longer enslaved, we don't gloat, we don't sort of hold that over the heads of those, our enemies. We wish for them also to be free from those things that are causing this anxiety and this anger. And so in light of that, we diminish our cup of wine. The tradition is to take your spoon for some people, or I use my finger, and for each of the plagues as we say them, to take a drop of wine out of your cup. And so we begin. Dom. Blood. Svardea. Frogs. Kinim. Lice. Arov. Wild beasts. Dever. Cattle plague. Shekhin. Boils. Varad. Hail. Arba. Locusts. Hoshech. Darkness. Makat Beforot. Killing of the firstborn. The plagues increased in their intensity and their harshness as they went until that final plague, the killing of the firstborn. But before we go on, I just want to pause another moment and think about the ninth plague this year, the plague of darkness. It certainly has been a year for all of us. The darkness has been a part of our lives as well, where we have had to stay in our own homes. If we think about, though, the Israelites too, they were told to go into their homes to stay in a space that would be safe, a dark space, as this plague was brought over the land. But if we think about the Israelites, they actually were not in total darkness, for what they had with them was a light, the light of God, the spark of the holiness of God who was with them, reminding them and ensuring them and giving them a message of hope that they would go free someday and to stay together and to pray and hope for that time to come soon. Perhaps we can think about that plague of darkness for us, maybe easing up some now as we move toward the spring and the hope of the Passover experience for us as well. We get past these plagues though, and Dayenu. <laughs> Please join me in singing. Ilu hoti hoti anu hoti anu mi mitraim hoti anu mi mitraim dai enu dai dai enu dai dai enu dai dai enu dai enu dai enu dai enu dai dai enu dai dai enu dai dai plagues. Glad that we're moving toward freedom. And indeed, that is the story as it continued, as the Israelites moved through the experience of the slavery and out into freedom. 
that God gives us a message that says that every year we must remember the whole door of our door that we were enslaved and now we are free. It's a message for us to remember what it, the challenge is to be lost in that space of sadness and challenge and to go into freedom. But it's not only for us, it's to see the light of the hope of the future and to see what possibilities exist. You know, and thinking about that light in the darkness, one could imagine that we're seeing the light of the zoom camera everywhere and that glow of the screen. Thank goodness that we had that to connect with one another throughout this year. But now we're moving into freedom. The Israelites moved out of Egypt. They started their journey. And if it wasn't but for about three days, all of a sudden they came across a tremendous obstacle, the Red Sea. Or if you read closely, actually, it's the Reed Sea, Yam Suf. They didn't know what was going to happen. They didn't know how to get across. They were tired. They were worried. And if it weren't for Nachshon ben Aminadav, a brave soul, who stepped forward and said, it's going to be okay. And as he stepped out and put his first foot, his toe even into the water, the sea split, the waters opened, and they were able to walk through. And on the other side, Miriam, the sister of Moses, led the women in a wild, passionate dance of celebration singing Mi Hamocha, Who is Like You, O God? And that's our story coming through from uh, slavery into freedom. We return now to some more of the rituals of the Seder, a second cup of wine, which I've got just over here. And we're going to sing the blessing for that second cup. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Blessed are you, sovereign our God, ruler of the universe, the one who has created the fruit of the vine. Now in the uh, traditional uh, Seder, uh, we would move um, toward the meal. But before we get there, we have to do a few more important rituals. The first is the blessing of the matzah, which we've only seen, but we haven't eaten. So I'm going to reach over here for my matzah. Here we go. And the blessing actually is twofold. One of the interesting things is that we are still, as always, when we eat, no matter what it is, we are grateful to have sustenance. So we say the Motzi uh, Lech Aretz, but that this is the first matzah that we're eating and it's unique. And so we say a blessing specifically for the matzah itself. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam hamotzi lechem min haaretz. Blessed are you, sovereign our God, ruler of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. And then, Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher kiddushanu b'mitzvotav v'tzivanu al achilat matzah. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who sanctifies us through your commandments and commanding us concerning the eating of matzah. Dry and crackly that is. <laughs> Wow, crumbs everywhere. Must be Passover. 
The next item on our Seder is from our Seder plate, which I'm just reaching to pick up here. And you can see I'm going to turn it to the uh, bitter herbs. Bitter herbs in uh, the tradition is horseradish. Some people use horseradish sauce in a jar, and that's fine. I, I tend to like to use the actual herb. The bitterness is very intense in that case. And we, again, for every unique thing, we pause to say a blessing. Uh, in a way, in Judaism, our blessings are moments of gratitude. E even the bitterness, we're still grateful for the message of freedom with our, with our bitter herbs. And so we'll say, Baruch atah Adonai. Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kiddushanu b'mitzvotav, b'tzivanu al achilat maror. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, who rules the universe, commands us to eat maror. Mm. Ooh, that's hot. That is hot bitter herbs. Mm. Perhaps one of the other food customs that's so interesting in Passover is to make a sandwich, but we don't use bread. We use not the fluffy bread, but we use our matzah bread. So I'm going to take a little bit more matzah here. This is called the uh, Hillel sandwich. Question is, did Hillel invent this? We're not certain, <laughs> but there's a very important message behind it. So we place some more bitter herbs on our sandwich here. But this time I'm going to reach over and just add some of my haroset. You know, in my house, haroset is walnuts. Uh, I see apples, a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of uh, Mogan David wine. So it becomes a bit sweet. Um, Cantor Deb, do you have a favorite uh, haroset recipe from your house? I do. I make it with two different kinds of apples. One tart, one sweet, golden raisins, dark raisins, honey, cinnamon, and Mogan David wine. Uh, there's probably a variety of uh, recipes out there for this wonderful delicacy. One of the things before we eat this to note is that there's no special blessing. We've actually blessed many of these elements throughout our experience in the Seder. And also the message though, that it's bitter and sweet together. Again, like life, right? Life I wish could be all sweet all the time, but it does come with bitterness as well. That's the wholeness. And our trick is to make our way through this journey of life, recognizing that it's all together and that we can do this. We can make it through all the experiences of life, knowing that it's just one opportunity of all of us sharing. And so we eat this Hillel sandwich. Oh, mm. yum. Oh, I'm going to have to do a lot of cleaning up in my house after this Seder. <laughs> well, if we were able to be together or if you were able to celebrate this Seder in a larger context, we would certainly now bring out a full meal. And I, uh, I imagine for some of you to think about what that meal might consist of. A very traditional course in the meal is a hard-boiled egg. Um, and another course is a gefilte fish. I don't know how many of you might have uh, made gefilte fish in your house. Uh, no, we didn't either. We had it from the jar. But for some, I've heard stories that when they would get ready for Passover, the smell of fish would be there for weeks. <laughs> weeks. Some great stories about that. And of course, as our meal goes on, we have plenty of wine to continue to drink and grape juice for those who prefer. And what would be Passover if it weren't for plenty of matzah? Well, we get to the end of the meal. And uh, as I said earlier, you know, there's a way that we finish it. The afikoman means dessert. And um, uh, I'm, uh, uh oh. Whoa, where, where did that coffee come and go? Uh, I um, found it on my side. Can't you, Deb? Now, how did you do that? <laughs> how it's you magic. Find? Jewish magic. <laughs> magic. She found it. Well, thank goodness, because now we can move to the end of our Seder. 
I'm so glad you found it as we each would eat a piece of that afikoman as the last taste of the the last taste of our delectable meal for this night. Um, you know, there's a tradition to ask for a prize. I'm surprised you haven't asked. <laughs> I didn't want to presume. <laughs> Is there a prize? I think there could be a prize. Uh, you know, one one prize I think always is uh, my favorite is uh, that of a chocolate bar, mm. but also some coins, some gold coins, so that you can have some coins and also to share them at Sadaka with with another person as well. What a prize to share it with others as well. Everybody has their tradition. You might recall about prizes for the Afi Komen. Well, it wouldn't be a seder if we didn't have. Elijah, Elijah the prophet. I'm going to reach over here for my special cup in the middle of my table. Eliyahu Hanavi, Elijah the prophet. It is said that Elijah will bring the message of the Messiah. Elijah is not the Messiah, but will bring the message of the Messiah. And that his task on every Passover night is to visit every Seder experience. Every Seder. Wow, he's a very busy prophet. And he's going to uh, enjoy that experience because we extend hospitality by a special uh, cup for him. The part of the message of Elijah is also one of hope. What things are we hoping for in this year? We've been through a year of great losses. Losses of friends, family, of uh, not seeing those whom we love, not spending time just simply enjoying a meal with our neighbors or being out and about in the way that we wish, gathering, going to sporting events, a whole bunch of life that really got turned on its head this past year. But now we are in a time of hope, gratitude for a vaccine that's been invented, the opportunity to look toward being healthy and finding a new space of being in the world ahead of us. Uh, Deb, I don't know if you have a specific hope for yourself for this year. I do. Um... It comes to mind that our hearts and our nation have been so troubled. My hope is that as we step into springtime and approach a fresh year, that we are able to link arms with family and friends and total strangers and walk into the future healthy and happy and grateful for the fact that we made it through the darkness into the light. Amen. Well, we sing to Elijah the prophet. Please join me. come soon and without delay. Well, that brings us to the end of our Seder celebration. It's been such a pleasure to be with you and to celebrate the themes and some of the main moments in the Haggadah and the story of Passover itself. It's been great to be here with Cantor Deb, bringing music along with uh, other special thoughts. Um, as we close our Seder for this year, our Seder celebration, I pray that uh, God bring soon deliverance from sadness, from COVID, from hatred, from challenge, from all those things that have been very difficult for us in this past year. And we pray that God bring peace, peace to us, our families, our loved ones, our neighbors, really to the whole world. 
and that this be a time where all of us have a chance to experience freedom, not just in our lives, but in the future generations as well. What would it be if we didn't finish out a Seder with a little bit of music? Some of the songs are traditional, some perhaps maybe not so traditional. <laughs> I would like to invite you to sing along with me on Adir Hu, which you heard as a nigun or a wordless melody at the beginning. But now let's sing the words together. ago that speaks to Southern Jewry, where I moved from when I moved back to Minnesota. It's called, Put Your Hand in the Hand of the One Who Split the Waters. <clears throat> and it goes like this. Put your hand in the hand of the one who split the waters. Thank you so very much. What a wonderful time to be together. We wish you a truly happy, happy Passover celebration. And may this be a season to bring new hope and joy. Shalom, Lehitra Ot. Lehitra Ot. Chag Sameach.